I'm Old Sneelock. I'm down here in the workshop in the basement today, and I'm trying to do what everybody wants to do, but we seldom have time or even inclination to do. I'm trying to clean up a little bit. I'm trying to make it so that when I go looking for something, I actually can find it. Uh, one of the things that I was teaching everyone else when I was an engineer was 5Sing. Uh, it's basically clean up, straighten up, and then keep it straight. I know that's only three S's, but I always thought the other two were a pain in the butt. So, what am I going to do to make my workshop a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier to find things? Well, one of the things that I thought of today was I have vacuum cleaner hoses and vacuum cleaner nozzles and vacuum cleaner tubes and uh, that's the one that I have in the basement. I still have another batch out in the garage. How did I get so many? They just followed me home. So, to make it a, a little bit better so that I can find them, I decided that I wanted to make a mount for them. And how was I going to go about doing that? Well, I took a hole saw and I drilled a plug. I said, that will let me mount this on the wall. Now, that's only going to handle one nozzle. Watch and I'll show you how I did the rest. To make that happen, I'm going to need, let's see, I have three nozzles, three tubes, that means I need six. So what am I going to get, cut six pieces of wood out of? What else? I have this nice piece of 2 by 12 it has been sitting around in the basement here the better part of three years, doing nothing. This is my dad's Makita. It's a half inch drill motor. It has a cord so the battery won't run dead. You notice where I got the chuck key? It's attached right to where the plug is. The reason I do that is so that I have to unplug the cord when I tighten the chuck. If when you're using the drill and you're trying to tighten the chuck, you're holding on to the drill, which some people do, you can pull that trigger by accident. With this unplugged, all it means is that nothing happens. See this little red button though? You pull the plug, you cannot have that little red button catch you. If you pull this trigger, at the same time that you're gripping that little red button, the trigger will lack. One of the things you'll notice is I have the chuck key attached to the cord, right at the cord cap, so that I have to unplug the drill motor to use the chuck key. Now, yes, you can plug it into an extension cord and still get away with it, but it, it makes you think. If you try and tighten up the chuck while you're holding the gun, all it takes is to pull that trigger and this chuck key is then going to wrap around and try and break your wrist. The other thing that these kind of drills have is a positive and a negative. It's positive that when you pull this trigger and push that button the trigger stays in. You can run a sanding disc, you can run a wire wheel without having to hold the trigger. My problem is if it catches, say I'm drilling this hole here and this catches in the hole and I've got that trigger locked, the only thing I can do is try and get a hold of that trigger and release it and if it doesn't do it right away, I'm going to go for a ride. Watch out for the red button. The other thing that happens is these motors are rather high speed and they have a gear in here to lower the RPMs and give you more torque. Makes the drill a little bit lighter. But when you pull the trigger, 
the winding has to slow down, the gear has to slow down, the shaft has to slow down, this big chuck has to slow down, and there's no brake on it. So if you're not paying attention, even when you let go, it's still trying to run. I've already drilled these holes through from the other side. I just have to break out this side. Now it would be real easy to grab a hold of that thing and just snatch that piece of wood out of there, no trouble. Once again, That trigger's right there waiting for you. Don't do it. Only takes a second to unplug it. Makes it so you don't have to spend a lot of time at the hospital trying to get your fingers put back on. Now you notice I'm holding the drill up close to my body. I want to have a good grip on it, so this is going to try and kick and go that way. I've got this handle up against my body and I've got the other handle up against my body. So it's going to try and have to move my whole body. That's a lot of power in that drill. You don't want it to get away from you. 